Hello, today we're going to look at section 2.3, polynomial and synthetic division. So we're going to be dividing polynomials together. And so what we're going to end up ultimately doing is factor these things out and then find the zeros, which of course is, you know, where it crosses the x-axis. So the first thing we're going to start is with this long thing divided by x minus 2. Now let me just do a quick review of what you did back in elementary school. When you had something like 12 divided into 400 and 3,218, something like that. Okay, We would go through, say, 12 goes into 4. Well, it doesn't, so we skip over that one. 12 goes into 43 times. Then we did 3 times 12 is 36. Then you subtract those values and bring down the 3. And then we'd go to the next one and do the exact same thing. Let me focus that camera in again. There we go. 3 again, so 36, and you just repeat this process over and over again to get to the very end. And then you have a remainder. Okay, so we're going to do this exact same thing with our functions here. So we're going to divide by x minus 2. It's called the divisor, by the way dividend, divisor, and then the answer is your quotient. And when we're doing this right here, we always want to make sure we put it in the order. When I mean that, we start with x cubed, then we have x squared, then we go to x, and then the constant value. We ha And we have to make sure every one is accounted for, meaning if you start with a 3, you have to have 3, 2, 1, and then the no x's. And the same thing with the what we're dividing by. So. We have x minus 2, of course that cannot go in just to the 6x cubed because it's two terms into 1 and you have to have 2 into 2. So we're not going to start there, but we're going to scoot over just like what we did with the 3 over here. So we're going to go into, these two terms have to go into two terms, so the easiest thing to do is you start with the first term, x times what is 6x cubed. So that would be 6x squared. So I'm going to make sure that goes above the x squared term because so our like terms are all in the same columns. It's important to keep the lined the alignment. So then just like we did here, we did 3 times 12 to get to 36. We're going to go 6x squared times x is 6x cubed. And 6x squared times a negative 2 is a negative 12x squared. And then over here, we subtracted, so we're going to do the same thing. Now you need to be careful here because when you subtract you're going to be doing 6 minus 6 and then a negative 19 minus a minus. So what I always like to do is I just go through and change the signs so I don't forget that negative goes to both of those. So I do 6 minus 6 of course is 0. 19 minus minus which is really a plus then so you just add those together and that would be a negative, what was that, negative 7x squared. When you do this, those first terms always need to cancel out or something's gone wrong. It would be too much left over. So just like we did over here when we were dividing the numbers, you drop down the 3, we drop down our next number, or our next term there. So we then just repeat the process. x times what is a negative 7x squared, and that would be a negative 7x. So we multiply the negative 7x times x minus 2. So negative 7x times x would be a negative 7x squared. And negative 7x times a negative 2 is a positive 14x. We subtract those. And remember, make sure you, you distribute that negative to both. So what I, would, what I always do is I like to change those signs just so I don't get myself mixed up and forget to do both of them. And I just kind of add them together. So negative 7 plus 7 is 0. 16 minus 14x would be a positive 2x. Then bring down the negative 4. x times what is 2x? That would be a plus 2. So 2 times x is 2x. 2 times a negative 2 is a negative 4. We subtract those. And again, make sure you do it to both. So I just go through and say 
Let's make that a negative, make that a positive, so I don't screw things up and forget the signs. 2 minus 2 is 0. Negative 4 plus 4 again is 0. And the good thing is, is we have no remainder there. So if I was to write out the answer there, that would be 6x squared minus 7x plus 2 is what we have left over once we divide. So that's the answer to that question. And just to show you how that relates to this graph, if you were to go ahead and factor that out, and you would get what those zeros are right there if you factor this remaining out. But we're not going to go through all this process right now. We're going to combine all that later together. Now we're going to move on to example number two on the next page. It is already written out for us. To be x squared plus 3x plus 5. We're going to divide that by the x plus 1. So same exact process. A little bit easier here, shorter. So we have x times what gives you x squared. And that would be x. So we multiply x times x is x squared. x times 1 is x. Subtract those values. And I cannot change those signs. So x squared minus x squared is 0. 3x minus x is 2x. Drop down the 5. Same process. x times what gives me 2x. Of course, that would be a positive 2. And multiply. x times both of those would give us 2x plus 2. Let's subtract those values. 2x minus 2x is nothing. 5 minus 2 gives me 3. So when we have that, now we have a remainder, which is a little bit different. And I don't know if you remember back when you did long division, um, a couple different ways you could write out that remainder. But what we're going to do is, I know it was like when you first started, you did like remainder of 3, and then you extended the decimal out, but you can also write it as a fraction. You write the remainder over what you're dividing by the divisor. And it's a plus right there because it's a positive value. If it was a negative value, that'd be a minus. So I have x plus 2, then the remainder is always a, written as a fraction divided by the divisor there. Okay, so number 3 is next. Now this one's a little bit different because Remember I told you you got to make sure you have all the powers accounted for, like the second, the first, and the zero power. When we divide here, we are missing, we start with x cubed, but we don't have any zero, or we don't have any x squareds, or, x, or just x's, so we have to add those in there, so we say plus zero x squared, plus zero x minus one. And we're going to divide that by x minus one. So it is critical that you add these zeros in there. If you don't, then all your stuff gets misaligned and we have some problems because you're going to leave out some stuff. So now it's just the same exact process and do the same thing over and over again. So x times x, x times what is x cubed? That would give us x squared. And again, write it over the x squared so our, everything stays in line. So x squared times x is x cubed x squared times a negative 1 is a negative x squared. Of course, you're getting it used to it. Change the signs. 0 and x squared. Even though it's a 0x, go ahead and drop it down, because we still need to have it there in order to be able to combine these two terms with those two terms. So x times what is x squared? Positive x. Multiply the x times both, you get x squared minus x. Let's go ahead and subtract. So when I subtract, I change my signs. 0 and 0 plus 1 gives you 1x. Drop down that negative 1. And of course, x times 1 is x. So 1 goes there, 1 times that. And of course, when you subtract those, remainder goes to nothing. So, my answer there is just x squared plus x plus 1. So the only difference in that one and what we've been doing is you have to make sure you include 
every single power, 3, 2, 1, 0. So we had to add in those zeros. So moving on to the last one on this page, 2.4, or example 4. This one looks like the same thing, so it's just a little bit longer. And we have all of our powers, 2, 1, 0, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. So we start the process. x squared times what? Gives me 2x to the fourth. That would be 2x squared. So make sure you put it over the squared, guys. Multiply that out. That would be 2x to the fourth plus 4x cubed minus 6x squared. Do the subtracting, so I like to change those signs. 2 minus 2 is nada. 4 minus 4, again, is nothing. And negative 5 plus 6 is just 1x squared. So if I just drop down the next one, now here's something a little bit different than what we've been used to. We have three terms here. We only have two terms here, so just dropping down one is not going to cut it this time. We've got to drop down the next guy. So we say x squared times what is x squared, then it's just a 1. So I jump over there, put that in my constant column. And of course, if you multiply that out, that'd be x squared plus 2x minus 3. Subtract those guys, and we have like that. Once we do that, that goes to 0. 3 minus 2 is just 1x. Negative 2 plus 3 is plus 1. So, to write our answer out, because we have a remainder now, 2x squared plus 1 plus, you put your remainder in the numerator, what you're dividing by goes in the denominator.